Alright guys, I'll just take one minute of your precious time. Just wanted to let all of you know that if you want to practice all these questions using artificial intelligence and practice on a portal which is as similar as your actual PT exam which will give you exact scores which you are likely to get in your exam, just register on languageacademy.com.au. You can practice as many questions. On top of that, you can get instant feedback, instant scores and instant suggestions on what are the things you need to work on and how to improve your mistakes and turn them into your strength. You can also take a full scored mock test. You'll get a full scorecard. You'll get in-depth analysis. You'll get tutor's feedback. One mock test is available for free and four sectional mock tests are available for free. You just need to go on languageacademy.com.au. Register over there. Use Google Chrome, log in and practice and make sure you get your desired score at the earliest. Now you can continue with the video or you can just log on to languageacademy.com.au and practice all these questions over there as well. All the very best. I'll see you very soon. Someone who looks extremely active, whose diary is filled from morning till night, who is always running to answer messages and meet clients may appear the opposite of lazy, but secretly, there may be a lot of avoidance going on beneath the outward frenzy. Busy people can evade a different order of undertaking. They are practically a hive of activity, yet they don't get around to working out their real feelings. They constantly delay the investigation of their own lives. They are lazy when it comes to understanding particular emotions. Their busyness may be a subtle but powerful form of distraction. Our minds are in general a great deal readier to execute than to reflect. They can be rendered deeply uncomfortable by so-called large questions. What am I really trying to do? What do I actually enjoy? Who am I trying to please? By contrast, the easy bit can be the running around. They never pausing to ask why. They repeatedly ensuring that there isn't a moment to have doubts or feel sad or searching. Busyness can mask a vicious form of laziness. Our lives might be a lot more balanced if we learn to reallocate prestige, putting it away from those with a full diary, and towards those wise enough to allow for some afternoons of reflection. We should think that there is courage not just in traveling the world but also in daring to sit at home with one's thoughts for a while, risking encounters with certain anxiety-inducing or melancholy but also highly necessary ideas.
Research has shown that in certain situations silent meetings actually work better. Specifically, if the goal of a meeting is to brainstorm or solve a problem, silent meetings have been shown to generate better ideas. But why? Solutions to a problem will often be a novel idea and novel ideas challenge convention. They can rock the boat and make people feel uncomfortable. But when participants gather around a table and generate written solutions in silence, a safe space is created. Novel ideas can emerge and people are less afraid of feeling embarrassed. Silent meetings also circumvent negative effects of something called production blocking. In a conventional meeting, only one person at a time can speak. As you wait your turn, the conversation may shift and you may lose your opportunity to raise an idea. Silent meetings allow for everyone to express ideas simultaneously. So how do you create a silent brainstorming meeting? Have people write down their ideas independently then sort them into clusters, discuss, and vote on the ideas that people like. The key is to let the initial ideation phase happen independently and in silence so we can separate egos from ideas. Silence is just one alternative. Since meetings have different goals, there's no reason they all have to look or sound the same.
Listen to a discussion in a music history class. The class is studying improvisation. Every jazz player knows what he or she means by improvisation. And all writers know what they mean by improvisation. The result, of course, is a lot of confusion and disagreement about what improvisation really is. We hear about the different types of improvisation, free improvisation, and controlled improvisation and collective improvisation. What does it all mean? Yes, Mary, my dictionary says improvise means to compose a recite without preparation. That's true, but it tells us only part of the story. As we know, musicians learn how to play their instruments before they could improvise. So they do have some preparation. Yes, Arthur, maybe a better definition is composing and performing at the same time. That tells us another part of the story. Let's try to understand it more by looking at history. The Golden Age of American Agriculture. Listen to part of a lecture in a history class. Then answer the question we call the first two decades of the 20th century, the Golden Age of American Agriculture. What were the factors that made the period, the Golden Age of American Agriculture? Who can offer some reasons? New strains of crops, improved farming methods. And what about greater use of pesticides and fertilizers? Absolutely. Technical advances continue to improve productivity. The U.S. Department of Agriculture set up demonstration farms to show how new techniques could improve crop yields. In 1914, Congress created the Agricultural Extension Service to advise farmers and their families about everything from crop fertilizers to home sowing projects. The Department of Agriculture undertook new research developing hogs that fattened faster on less grain, as well as fertilizers that increased grain production, new hybrid seeds that developed into healthier plants, treatments that prevented or cured plant and animal diseases. And various methods for controlling pests were all introduced around this time. Anything else? Wasn't there also some kind of population boom around then? Good farm prices were high as demand for goods increased and land values rose. However, the good years of the early 20th century ended following World War I. What was happening then? Maybe a lot of people, women especially were moving from the farm to the cities.
President Trump has reluctantly signed a bill imposing penalties on Russia over for its policies in Ukraine and alleged intervention in the U.S. presidential election last year. Following that, he slammed the measure, claiming that it infringed on his ability to negotiate foreign policy and harmed the interests of European partners. According to the corporation that provided the voting machine for Venezuela's disputed constituent assembly elections, the turnout count was exaggerated by at least one million people. Prosecutors should launch a criminal probe right away, according to the Speaker of the Opposition-Controlled National Assembly. The U.S. has announced that it will withdraw from the Paris Climate Agreement. The United Nations has been informed, formally enforcing a decision made by President Trump in June. The State Department, on the other hand, stated that the United States will continue to participate in climate change discussions until the withdrawal process was finished. According to new research, Weather-related calamities in Europe might kill more than 150,000 people per year by the end of the century. According to a European Commission research, heat waves are responsible for 99% of all weather-related deaths on the continent.
Kenya's Election Commission announced just a few minutes ago that incumbent Uhuru Kenyatta had won Tuesday's presidential election. The opposition, which has accused the results of being rigged, has rejected them. The process, according to an opposition spokeswoman, is a charade. The verbal spat between Washington and Pyongyang over North Korea's nuclear program has alarmed world leaders. North Korea accused President Trump of bringing the country to the brink of nuclear war after he said the U.S. military was locked and loaded. Russia, China, and Germany have all urged restraint and continued diplomatic efforts. This winter has been rather cold. It almost feels like we're entering a new ice age. Now don't laugh. This statement isn't as crazy as it seems. Yes, global warming is a uh, hot topic these days, but more and more scientists are considering the possibility of global cooling occurring soon. This would result in the average temperatures on Earth dropping. It has happened in the past, and it will happen again in the future. Earth is warm now, but that's not always the case. In the past, large parts of the planet were covered in ice. We call these periods ice ages. Note the plural. There wasn't just one ice age. There have been several. During the recent past, we experienced the Little Ice Age. It lasted almost 500 years from around, um, say 1300 to 1800. The ice pack in the Arctic Ocean grew larger and moved south. Glaciers in the European Alps and on Greenland grew bigger and advanced southward temperatures dropped all over the northern hemisphere. Winters were longer, summers were shorter, and summer rains were heavier. There were numerous famines since the cold and rain frequently destroyed crops. Why did this ice age and others like it happen? One theory claims that Earth's orbit caused them. Earth orbit changes slightly over time, so the northern hemisphere receives less sunlight on those occasions. This reduces temperatures. It's possible that an orbital change caused the major ice ages. In case you're curious, the last such ice age happened around 20,000 years ago. How often does Earth's orbit change? No one knows for sure. Scientists estimated changes between every 20,000 to 50,000 years. There's also a second possible reason for global cooling. This relates to decreased solar activity. 
The appearance or lack of sunspots can affect temperatures here on Earth. During the Little Ice Age, there were significantly fewer sunspots. For instance, in one 30-year period, astronomers spotted a few dozens on spots. Normally, they would have seen tens of thousands of them with less solar activity. Some believe temperatures on Earth decreased, thereby resulting in colder weather. It seems to me that architecture is pretty much something that causes us both pleasure and trouble. I live in the part of western London where I think many of the streets are really really ugly, and this distresses me every time when I walk to a supermarket or walk to the tube. I do not understand why they built those buildings without architecture. A bad building has a serious impact on the people around it, which could be hundreds of years. It lasted so long, and if you write a bad book or a bad play, I will be shocked when it was shown. Suppose the book arose a little bit from the frustration, and then I realize if you talk about architecture, you will say why building are not more beautiful. Then you will say I can use such work as, beauty, which is a really arrogant word. And no one knows what beautiful is. It's all in the eye of the beholder. I couldn't help but think about that actually. Well, you know that we all attempt to agree that Rome is nice than Milky Kings, and San Francisco has the edge of Frankfurt, so we can make that sort of generalization. Surely they are something we can say about why a building works or why it doesn't. So the books really attempt to suggest why architecture works when it does and what might go wrong when it doesn't work.
Map making has a long and fascinating history, both before Ptolemy produced the first great map of the world and after, up to the beautiful simplicity of the London Underground map and the precisely detailed Ordnance Survey maps, which cover almost every inch of the United Kingdom. Ancient map makers used to draw in hills, valleys, and rivers to give an idea of the topography, the shape of the land. It wasn't until the late 16th century that contour lines were used, that is, lines that linked points of the land at the same height, but this was to show the relative depths and shallows of a river. The first time land contours were used was on a map of France, which took about 40 years to complete, and was finished in 1783. The Ordnance Survey was set up in 1791 and their maps, as the name suggests, were originally made for military purposes, and the first one to be produced was of the county of Kent at a ratio of one inch to one mile. Now let's talk a video. Video and audio is a tool for mobile and here is the thing. It also works beautifully for social media and web too. It kills three birds in one stone. Do you know why TV does so well and films do so well? So really easy answer. We humans react best to seeing the picture, other human beings talking back to us, and playing all these stories or what not. Yet you will find that most of the web is texted, yet when I have a 4 minute video, it does better or when I have the slideshow that an audio track to it. They do so much better than all my other content because we need that. This is a flat screen, we need to live it up somehow. This is a small screen, it's not easy to read lengthy text, but if I create a lengthy article, and then I create a 3 minute video or a set of 3 minute videos about it. Then I am not repurposed to the use. I have differentiated from all my competitors and I use a fancy QR code to link to these. Oh my god, we're innovating at the spear.
parents and other adults with whom children have close contact have a powerful influence on children's food preferences. Children are very sensitive to the reactions of those around them. And if they see others enjoying a particular food, they will be inclined more favorably towards that food. Thus, if parents want to persuade their children to eat more vegetables than rather than simply telling them what to eat, it's more effective to demonstrate that they themselves Our oceans are really very well traveled on the surface, but in terms of the deep sea, uh, it's probably the one area of our planet that hasn't been explored. The first visit by a human to the ocean floor was in 1960 when the U.S. Navy sent a vehicle to the Mariana Trench, the deepest part of the ocean. Anyway, what exactly do we know about the deep sea? Well, we define it as 200 meters below the surface of the ocean. And around that point sunlight begins to disappear and temperatures begin to drop a thousand meters and beyond. There's complete darkness, very little oxygen, and pressures that are a thousand times greater than at the Earth's surface. However, somehow it's full of life life that has a huge effect on our own lives, because half of the oxygen we breathe is generated by living things in the ocean. So in the future, Scientists are going to try and find out more about O. Although the original American Indian cultures were highly diverse, they were similar in many of their traditions. Religious beliefs and rituals permeated every aspect of Indian life. Southwest tribes such as the Hopi and the Apaches had a rich and elaborate year-round sequence of ceremonials including songs, dances, and poetry. The Hopi performed dances to bring rain. The Apaches engaged in special dances and ceremonies to gain support of the spirits before undertaking raids or going into war. The Plains tribes often sought contact with the spirits by going on a vision quest.
In the 19th century, few people could afford to travel abroad. It was expensive and there weren't the mass transport systems that we have today. So curiosity about foreign lands had to be satisfied through books and drawings. With the advent of photography, a whole new dimension of reality became available. Publishers were not slow to realize that here was a large new market of people hungry for travel photography and they soon had photographers out shooting the best-known European cities, as well as more exotic places further away. People bought the pictures by the millions, and magic lantern shows were presented in schools and lecture halls. Universities should assist students in their career preparation. Universities should assist students in their career preparation. Your accountant will instruct you on how to fill out these documents. Your accountant will instruct you on how to fill out these documents. Students must prepare materials ahead of time for the seminar.
students must prepare materials ahead of time for the seminar. Because of his infirmity, he was excused from military service. Because of his infirmity, he was excused from military service. Now crack your PTE sitting at your home. Language Academy brings to you the smartest AI-powered practice portal, with instant scores and feedback for all the tasks. Along with the practice questions, Access free sectional and full mock tests, and get instant scorecard with in-depth feedback and analysis. For more hidden secrets, tips, strategies, and proven templates, click the link below and subscribe to our video course today.